Welcome to the Fierce as Fuck podcast. I'm your host, Amanda King, and I'm here to teach anybody who wants to fucking listen how to have the audacity to say fuck it to societal standards and live their most authentic life. This podcast is dedicated to bringing sexual conversations from behind closed doors onto the main fucking stage. Because sex, masturbation, squirting, guess what? It's all fucking normal. And by bringing these conversations to the forefront, we help people feel less alone in this world. We help them feel safe. We help them gain their power back, step into their confidence, and have the ability to express themselves authentically as fuck in this world. Because it takes fucking audacity to be your truest self. And we, we have boatloads of audacity up in this bitch. So let me ask you this. Are you ready for some epic shit? Hello, everybody. So I get a lot of questions on Instagram and Facebook on a daily basis. And I really struggle keeping up with all of them and answering all of them, especially in the format of Instagram and Facebook, where it always it needs to be short and concise, right? Like 60 seconds. And so I don't know why the fuck I've never done this before. I'm going to start going through my Instagram messages and my Facebook messages and doing episodes dedicated to them. So then that way I can start having longer form discussions and people who listen on the podcast can get like a little bit of I don't know, view into some of the questions that come in just in case you don't follow me on social media platforms. So I have this message from this woman and says, long story short, I'm having a hard time climaxing with my partner. I can get there myself, but not with him or anyone else. We communicate well. I have been close and he will listen to what I need and it will disappear rather than build. I don't want to introduce toys. I have gotten rid of my own to crave his body more. I don't watch porn anymore and neither does he. I'm not sure what to do at this point. I feel safe and loved, but it's something amiss. Thanks for all your content. Holy fucking shit. Okay. So we got a lot to unpack here. So let's unpack this. First, when we look at climaxing in general for women, it is not what I would say an easy feat. A lot of women struggle with orgasms. A lot of women do. And this is because we are told to fear our bodies. We've had episodes about this before, right? That pleasure isn't something that's safe. It's not secure. And therefore we should not be experiencing it. And so innately from a young age, when we start experiencing that pleasure through puberty, we typically shut it down because we think to ourselves, this is dirty. This is like unsanitary. I shouldn't be feeling this way. This is all wrong. And so we get into adulthood and a lot of women who haven't addressed those issues start struggling with climaxing as adults. And the thing is too, so many people think climaxing is just a physical thing, which it is like physically it happens to your body, but having an orgasm is is as much of a mental game as it is a physical game. And I want to talk about that because I think this is the underlining problem with what this person is experiencing is it has nothing to do with the physical stimulation. It's all a mental block. So let's discuss a few things first, because this is going way too fucking extreme. I understand that you want to feel pleasure with a partner. I get that. I understand that. That is a way to connect intimately. That is a way to connect with your partner, to make them feel good, to make you feel good, but to literally stop using toys and to sit here and stop doing the things that make you feel good, i.e. masturbating, i.e. using toys, i.e. watching porn is absolutely no, no, just no, no. Denying your body of something that it wants is not going to make it crave it in another way. Because what you are doing is you are already sexually frustrated. Number one, you're sexually frustrated with yourself because you cannot climax. 
So what do you then do? You think, let me sexually frustrate myself further by taking away all of the things that are able to get me off in order to get off with my partner. That is a recipe for disaster. Absolute fucking disaster. I'm sorry. And if if you were the woman who is listening to this, I'm sorry if this comes out harsh because I understand your ability and where you're coming from, where you think, okay, well, if I stop masturbating, I don't use toys and I stop watching porn. All of a sudden my body is going to think, oh, my partner's penis is going to be the Holy grail. So every time it's inside of me, I'm going to climax. Absolutely not. You're just going to piss your body off more. You were telling, you were starving your body of something it needs and then asking it to perform. Your body is an athlete, right? You tell your your body to go run 10 miles, but you say, I'm going to give you the emptiest of tank. I'm not going to fucking feed you. I'm going to starve you. And then you still need to go run 10 miles. Your body's going to be like, fuck you. Fuck right the fuck off. That's what you're doing to your body. Why would you go to that extreme? Why? There is no fucking need for it. There are plenty of people in this world who can get off by themselves, who cannot get off with a partner. There is nothing wrong with that. As long as you are feeling sexually satisfied on all levels. So let's break down a few things as I always do with struggling with climaxing. Number one, not all women can climax via penetration. About 18% of women can. 18, that's it, ladies. 18 fucking percent. Now let's look at clitoral orgasms. That's about 85% of women can have orgasms via clitoral stimulation. That's a huge fucking variance. So if you cannot get off during penetration, that's why. Because some women's bodies are literally not built to get off via penetration. But society tells us it's the only way we can get off. And so we hyper fixate on it. And then all of a sudden, that's the only way our partners think we can get off. And then everyone's like, why aren't they getting off? Because not every woman's body is built the same. I do not get off the same way that she gets off, the way that she gets off. We are all different. And what you need to do is you need to play to those differences rather than trying to conform to a fucking box of penetration sex because that's what's supposed to happen. No. Number two, if you are struggling having an orgasm, are you experiencing, are you experimenting with the 12 different types of orgasms or are you only focusing on penetration? Because penetration is very few orgasms, right? The orgasms that happen typically via penetration are A spot, U spot, G spot, cervical. So, and that's penetration of penis, penetration of toys, anything. So if you're struggling with having an orgasm via penetration, those four types aren't going to work with you. Guess what? There's a bunch of other types. There are multiple orgasms. There are blended orgasms. There are nipple orgasms. There is oral orgasms. There is uh, clitoral orgasms. There are anal orgasms. There are a sleep orgasms, fantasy orgasms. There are a plethora that you can choose from. So don't sit here and automatically think there's something wrong with you if you cannot get off via penetration. Now, if you cannot get off with your partner versus yourself, let's break that down. The reason you can't, the, not the reason, one of the many reasons you could possibly not being able to get off with your partner is because no one knows your body better than you. No one knows your body better than you. When you're in a self-pleasure masturbation, whatever session you want to call it, it is you with you. You don't have to think, right? You just do. You touch here, you squeeze there, you use a toy here and your body reacts because you feel safe, because you feel calm, because you're not hyper fixating on an orgasm. You're just there to enjoy the experience. When you're with yourself, you're the safest you've ever been because you're with your body. When you're with yourself, you don't have to communicate what you want. You just do what you want. Therefore, you are able to typically orgasm and women typically do orgasm via masturbation and self-pleasure more frequently and in more intense ways than they do with partner play. So if you cannot have an orgasm with him and you're struggling to have an orgasm with him, let's break down the reasons. One, because you were being pulled out 
of the moment because you are hyper fixating on your orgasm. The second you walk into a fucking session, whether it's a solo session or whether it's a partner session, and you think to yourself, I got to fucking come. <laughs> I have to come. Not I, like I want to, I have to. Not even a, a need to, like need is still this like, Mm, I need to come because I need that release. It's a, I have to, your orgasm just became a fucking to-do list rather than something that should be you relaxing and enjoying what your orgasm brings. It becomes a task. So you come into a session. I sound very angry. I'm not angry. <laughs> Sorry. When I get really passionate, I go on a roll and sometimes I can come off as anger. I'm not angry. And I don't mean to be shouting. <laughs> if you're listening, this poor woman, I'm not yelling at you. I'm so sorry. I just get so passionate about it because we as women overanalyze sex so bad. It's not our fault. It's it's not our fault. But when you walk in to a session with your partner and all you're doing is saying, I have to, I have to, I have to come. You will never fucking come. Mark my fucking words. Mark my words. Because you are now creating a mental block. Your mental block will physically stop your body from having an orgasm because every time it gets close, just like you said in the letter, not the letter in the message, you get there and you start communicating it to him. Oh my God, I'm almost there. Or this is going to happen. You instantly pull yourself out of the orgasm. The reason you can come when you're by yourself and not with your partner is because when you're by yourself, you're not hyper fixating on it. You're just letting your body do what it naturally needs to do. You're not communicating. You're just touching your feeling, your feeling. When you are in a partner session and you are communicating, yes, that feels good. Keep going. Yeah, that's a good thing for him, but also that kind of can sometimes pull you out of the fucking moment because then you start hyper fixating on, oh, there goes a climactic kill. I'm going up it. I'm going up it. I'm going up it. And the second you start recognizing you're going up it rather than feeling it, you start analyzing it and you start applying logic to something that logic literally should have no fucking, like no seat at the table. When it comes to this, you should never, ever think of logic when you are about to have an orgasm. The second you start analyzing it, you're done. You're not going to have one. You're not. Why go into a session acting like your orgasm needs to be a fucking task and that you need to achieve it? No, go into a session and say, I'm going into a session and I'm just going to focus on feeling. Go into a session with no goal of an orgasm. I know, I know it's crazy. I know that that is ultimately the goal. And we want every single person to have an orgasm via sex. But when you sit here and you start hyper fixating on an orgasm, you create so many mental blocks. You are not going to achieve it. You are throwing a wall or your ex, let's the climactic hill. You are throwing rocks at yourself and you are rolling backwards because you are creating one mental block after another, because you start to get sexually frustrated. Right. And then what happens when you get sexually frustrated, you then get more hyper fixated and more sexually frustrated. And then it happens again. And that happens again. And then you, you poor fucking woman are starving your body of the release that it needs thinking that it's going to create a release. No, you're going to hold on to that shit 20 times more. Your body will fight you every fucking step of the way. Do not ever deny your body self-pleasure. And I don't know if your partner is perpetuating this by, um, making you feel bad because he can't help you or she can't help you achieve. Um, I'm just looking to see if you mentioned, Jen. yeah, so it's a man. So I don't know if he is adding any pressure, but that, ne that shit needs to stop if he is. But if he's also being supportive, it may need to be, hey, I'm not going to tell you, just fucking do it. And let's just both go in to feel good. Stop focusing on me having an orgasm. I'm going to stop focusing on me having an orgasm. And we're going to go in to be with each other, to connect intimately, to touch, to feel, to fuck, to taste. We're going to go in to be together. And if we orgasm, great. If we don't, that's okay too. You should never deny your body self-pleasure. And then girl, let me even don't, you don't want to bring toys into it. You think toys are the problem. Toys are the solution. Once again, your body does not crave toys more than it craves sex. So we look at toys, right? 
And this is where the whole toys are competition. Your body does not crave toys more. Sex and masturbating are two fucking different things. Masturbation is a time to be by yourself, to connect intimately with yourself, to learn new and fun and exciting things about your body. Sex and partner play is about being there in the moment to connect intimately with another person. Does that intimacy sometimes include toys? It sure as fuck should. It sure as fuck should. Bringing a toy into your sex life is going to enhance your sex life. It is going to help with that sexual frustration because it's not going to make your partner feel like he needs to do all the fucking work. He's going to have a helping hand, right? If he is penetrating you and you have a clit stimulator on there, your likelihood of having an orgasm just increased probably by at least double. Throw a butt plug in there, you got three, up to three times. Some nipple clamps, four times. There are so many ways that toys can enhance your sex life. Why would you ever, ever sit here and say, I've gotten rid of my own toys to crave his body more? You are going to. Oh, girl, you messing with fire. You about to get burned. That's not good. Absolutely not. Toys are enhancers. If you cannot get off with just your partner's penis, you're gonna need to bring in a toy and you're gonna need to start masturbating again. Sorry, not sorry. We cannot deny our bodies of something and then expect our bodies to do something for us. What you need to do is you need to focus on getting through the mental blocks that you have now created with this orgasm because you have now put a fucking shit ton of pressure on yourself. You are a powder keg about to fucking burst. And if you don't get some of this sexual frustration out, your body will start literally harming itself. Your body, you'll start getting sick more. You won't feel great. Like you have to allow your body to naturally release what it needs to release. Use it or lose it. You can't just sit here and deny your body sexual frustration and then not understand why your body is actually frustrated. Do not ever take self-pleasure and out of your fucking repertoire in order to crave someone's body more. You will crave their body regardless. Toys are not a replacement for an actual person because toys do not create intimacy and connection. There is nothing like having sex with another person and looking into their eyes. There is nothing like tasting another person or climaxing with another person or just being there all sweaty and bodily fluids with another. There is nothing that can replace that. No toy can ever replace it. So everyone chill the fuck out (laughs) when we're talking about toys replacing people. They can't. They cannot replace that level of intimacy. So stop thinking it's toys or climaxing with my partner. It doesn't have to be one or the other. You get to have both. And bringing toys into the bedroom is going to help you, not hurt you. So one, recap of all this. I apologize for sounding like I'm yelling. I'm just very passionate about this. Number one, you need to add self-pleasure back into your life. Sorry, not sorry. You're never going to climax with your partner if you can't climax your yourself. Just because you're climaxing with yourself doesn't mean you can't climax with your partner. Number two, educate yourself. If you are not climaxing via penetration, you are part of the majority of women, not the minority. So how do you come? If you cannot come via penetration, you start three, adding other stimulation. Go and look at the 12 different types of orgasms. I'm probably going to do a training, honestly. In uh, July's issue of Smex Ed Magazine, which releases on the 15th, uh, I'm probably going to do an entire training dedicated to the 12 types and how to achieve each because I get the question all the time. So research that. The training is $1.99 on Smex Ed, www.smexed.com. Go look at it. Buy the training. Educate yourself so that you know. Okay, well, penetration, don't do it, at least with my partner, you know. So let me try other ways. Let's look at the other style of orgasms. And even if you're, if you can get off via penetration by yourself and you can't get off via penetration with your partner, think about the difference. One, you're more relaxed when you have a toy. Toys have different vibration settings, different speed settings, different rhythm settings. Penises need more attention. They need more um, coaching when it comes to rhythms, 
right? It takes a little bit to find natural rhythms. There are things in penetration toys that the penis just cannot do. That's nothing wrong with the penis. Means nothing wrong with your partner. There's just things that toys can do. They're battery operated or not battery, not since 1990, but like they're powered. They have motors. So yeah, they're going to be able to provide you sometimes with faster thrusting than an actual human can because an actual human would pass the fuck out. This is why adding other areas of stimulation will help you achieve an orgasm. Number four, I think I'm on number four, address your mental blocks because you've just created about a thousand of them. Number five. Walk into solo sessions, not solo sessions, my bad, partner play sessions, and not focus on having an orgasm. Focus on being present in the moment. Focus on feeling, feeling, have your partner blindfold you. And then don't fucking say a thing. Don't coach them. Don't guide them. Let them play. Say, here you go. I'm a fucking play with me. Touch me. Listen to my body, right? Watch my body. Yes, guiding and coaching is always good during partner play. And I always say that, but sometimes the best coaching is just letting someone watch your body react, listening to your breath, right? Watching as you break out in goosebumps, watching as you arch your back, you bring your hips off of the bed or the table, wherever you're fucking like, right? Allow it to be somewhere where you can be calm, blindfold, nice music, have a glass of wine before, go in and just let them touch, taste, lick, fuck, and don't guide them. Let them just do it and let yourself just be there and feel every feeling that is happening during the act so that you can be present in that moment. And the second you start feeling that orgasmic climb, just don't concentrate on it. Concentrate on the feeling that is causing it. So if it is clit stimulation, concentrate on that how good it feels. Just think that, oh my God, this feels so good. This feels so good. This feels good. Good. <laughs> Focus on that. And then stop treating your orgasms like to-do lists and tasks. This is performance anxiety, man. The second you start putting pressure on something and you hyper fixate on it, you are literally taking away your ability to do such because you are putting mental blocks and disruptive thoughts will come up like a motherfucker during it. Do not ever deny your body of self-pleasure in order to force it to then receive pleasure in another way. It's not going to work. And so I hope this helped. Um, and always, if you guys have follow-up questions, you can DM me on Facebook or on Instagram. If you like this episode, you know someone who needed to hear it, I'll go ahead and share this with them. Um, but yeah. Just don't ever deny your body something and expect it to produce something. It's just not going to happen that way. Be kind to yourself. Add self-pleasure back. You need it. I will see you guys in the next episode. Thank you so much for listening to the Fierce As Fuck podcast. And some parting words for you today. Remember this. No matter how hard society pushes you down, no matter how many times you fall, as long as you get the fuck back up, they can never stop you. You are unfuckable with. You will win. Don't allow this world to dictate how you show up in it. Don't allow society to make you bend the knee. Instead, make them bend theirs. And don't forget, if you like what you heard, go on to iTunes and Spotify and leave your girl a review. Until next time, my